very excited to be here with you today and speaking on the efficacy in treating severe deep bite in adults line the purpose of my presentation is a to help you feel more confident about treating severe deep bite in adults and b to help you feel more comfortable in trusting the system especially with the latest innovations to be able to effectively treat deep bite in adult patients the diagnosis of deep bite determines the treatment mechanics for resolving it some of the treatment options could be anterior intrusion posterior extrusion or a combination of both some of the parameters we need to look at are incisal display is there superreduction of the upper incisors needing anterior intrusion we also want to look at the gingival display for example in gummy smiles when we want to do more of anterior intrusion how is the smile look where do the teeth sit fit, fit into the face where do we want differential intrusion and extrusion we have to look at the lower curve of spee do we need to level it by incisor intrusion and or premolar extrusion now some of the patients where posterior extrusion is beneficial are patients with a low facial height or a class 2 dip 2 type of pattern or hypodivergent and patients with skeletal deep bites if crowding is present and bite opening is required we might need to consider relative intrusion which is proclination with intrusion as that is more predictable with invisalign we also need to have adequate anchorage in the form of attachments on the premolar teeth to help with incisor intrusion and vivera retainers with bite ramps are an efficient tool to maintain and retain deep bites bicuspids can be extruded if required for treatment and for this purpose deep bite attachments for extrusion are activated to deliver this force we may want to leave with hard occlusal contacts posteriorly and no contacts anteriorly so we need to know that your clinch check plan is your virtual reverse curve wire something like how it is in your fixed orthodontic appliances so we need to build in some amount of over treatment also in our clinch check plans to get the ideal result we are all comfortable in knowing about the g5 d5 treatment protocols that we have been using but what is exciting is the invisalign g8 we have so many more features which are automatically programmed to give us better results in our deep bite patients such as the precision bite traps which are automatically placed in cases requiring at least 1.5 mm of lower incisor intrusion optimized support attachment for the lower lateral incisors are given when you need additional intrusion of the lower central or adjacent canines of more than 1 mm the leveling of the marginal ridges of the canines in premolars has been improved resulting in a much flatter curve of speed earlier there would still be a curve of speed at the end of treatment in our clinch checks but now we have a much flatter curve of speed the smart force aligner activations on anterior intrusion are now built in when there is a threshold of more than equal to 0.5 mm of anterior intrusion now what we need to know is these activations are calibrated individually to provide sufficient and balanced intrusive forces on the anterior teeth and these aligner activations improve clinical predictability of incisor intrusion by up to two times so which is very good some of the advantages of using invisalign in our deep bite patients is that a there is no delay to start leveling the curve of speed with lower anterior intrusion like with fixed appliances pure intrusion can be programmed and supported by innovation precision bite traps are not bonded on the teeth and therefore they do not impair chewing as well as they are automatically adjusted to maintain anterior contact throughout all stages of treatment today i would be sharing my experience in treating deep bite in three adults of different age groups and slightly different facial patterns my first patient today is a 25 year old male patient who came to me and did not like his smile on examination he was a class 2 division 1 subdivision malocclusion with an overbite of almost 5 mm a canted occlusal plane some crowding in the lower midlines were not coincident some spacing in the upper an exaggerated curve of speed retrocline upper central and lateral incisors and lingually tipped upper right canines these are his extra oral photographs in the intra oral photographs you can see that he has a deep bite retrocline incisors canines and uncoordinated arches 
On the X-ray, we can see the amount of root uprighting that is required in his upper right central lateral and canines, and also the exaggerated curve of speed in the upper and lower arches. The treatment plan for this patient was to correct his class two with unilateral elastics on the right side, alignment, relative and true intrusion of the upper and lower anteriors to help reduce the overbite, some extrusion of the premolars to help level the curve of speed, correction of can by increased intrusion of the upper right side incisors and canines, correct the midline with the help of IPR and finish with well-coordinated arches. My treatment goal for this patient was to finish with an ideal class two, class one man occlusion, class one occlusion, sorry, with an ideal overjet and overbite. Now, this is a young adult, so we want to give him an as close to an ideal occlusion as possible. When we look at the clinch check, some of the features we can see are the power ridges for torque correction, the precision hooks on the right side for class two correction, some amount of IPR in the lower to help with the midline correction. When we look at the superimposition tab, we can see the increased intrusion on the upper right side, some amount of relative and true intrusion in the lower anterior segment. We can see a combination of conventional as well as optimized deep bite attachments. Now, when we also look at the occlusal view, we can see that the overbite has been overcorrected in the front and we are finishing with heavy occlusal contacts in the posterior. I decided to give him a canine bite ramp as I did program a large amount of intrusion of the upper incisors. Now also, as we can see, the curve of speed has been leveled, but not overcorrected. We have only finished with a flat level curve of speed in this patient. Now at the end of the first set of aligners, this is how he looked. We had corrected the deep bite largely and the can, and what was remaining was further uprighting of the upper right incisors. The patient also did not want any restoration, and hence we decided to now level the incisor edges instead of the gingival margins. So I did build an overcorrection in the curve of speed in the second set and wanted to finish with a zero millimeter or less overbite in the clincheck plan, knowing that clinically I would not achieve this, but probably an ideal overbite. This is how he looked post-treatment. We did achieve ideal overjet and overbite, good inclinations, good torque, good can correction, and well-coordinated arches. And he was a much happier and a much more smiling patient at the end of treatment. These are his comparison intraoral, occlusal, and extraoral photographs. If you look at his comparison OPGs, we can see that the, we did achieve good root uprighting of the upper incisors and canines, and also good leveling of the curve of speed. This is how the progress of the can correction went and the overbite reduced in this patient. When we started, he had an overbite of 4.5 millimeter, which finished to a, we had planned to finish it to about one millimeter. We achieved a 1.5 millimeter reduction at the end of the first set, and we finally decided to overcorrect the overbite correction to 0 0.9 millimeter. This is the comparison of before treatment, expected, and actual result. So what you see is what you get. Now, what went well in this patient was that the canned and overbite corrected. Despite using elastics on the canned side, we got very good root uprighting and canine talking also. Now, this patient initially started with two-week aligner changes because we were on the old protocol then. So today, what I would do differently is to give him weekly aligner changes. And with G8, I would probably not need an exaggerated curve of speed in my second set. If at all, I do need to order for a second set. My second patient today is similar, but also different in certain ways. He's a much older male patient, close to 60 years of age, and his chief complaint was his front teeth are very inwardly placed and he did not like his smile. Now he had a typical class two division two subdivision malocclusion with a missing premolar in the lower left. His bite was very deep, was all over by being almost seven millimeters. He had severe retroclination of the upper incisors and he had severe crowding and an exaggerated curve of speed. Also, there was a lot of attrition, gingival recession, and cervical abrasions present in several teeth. He was also a brachycephalic facial type, as you can see in his extraoral photographs. Intraoral photographs, you can see the severe retroclination, the 100% deep bite, the crowding, and the skewed arches because of a missing lower premolar. In the X-rays, you can appreciate the very exaggerated curve of speed and the hyper-eruption 
of the upper and the lower anterior teeth. My treatment plan for this patient was alignment with the help of some amount of upper IPR to reduce the boltons, correction of the deep bite by and leveling of the curve of speed by both incisor and intrusion, relative and true, as well as posterior extrusion. Some proclination and torquing of the upper incisors, midline correction, use of class 2 elastics to help with anchorage as well as extrusion of the, pre, the posterior molar teeth to help with bite opening, some expansion and to finish with well-coordinated arches. What was my treatment goal? I wanted to achieve improvement in the overjet and reduction in the overbite, relieve his crowding, eliminate the trauma from occlusion and improve the visibility of his upper anteriors and his smile. Now, this is a much older patient, so I may not be able to achieve an ideal class one, ideal overjet and ideal overbite. Now, when we look at the ClinCheck plan, we can see a lot of advanced movements that are being programmed here because of the severity of the malocclusion. We can see power ridges. We can see the conventional attachments on the upper lateral incisors to help with intrusion and torquing of the upper central incisors. We can see the IPR done in the upper to help reduce the overjet, but also the exaggerated curve of speed that is being built in here much more than the previous patient because of the advanced age as well as the advanced severity of this case. And you can see the attachments which are helping in the posterior extrusion. When I look at the superimposition, we can see the exaggerated amount of intrusion, especially in the lower incisor region. When we look at the occlusal uh, view, we can see that there are no contacts anteriorly and very much reduced overbite and very heavy contacts posteriorly along with canine bite trams to help with upper incisor intrusion. Now, we can, for correction of the upper incisors, we can see a staged pattern. Now, here we decided to do first proclination, then intrusion, and then retraction of the upper anteriors, as that would be more predictable in this patient, considering the severity and the advanced age of the patient. Now, this is how this patient looked at aligner 40 when we had finished with the active number of aligners in the lower arch. And when we did a scan to compare, we saw that the bite opening was tracking very well. In fact, even a little better in the patient's mouth. We had planned for an overbite reduction from 6.7 millimeter to 0.6 millimeter at aligner 40. This had already reduced to 4.1 millimeter. And now in the next set, we decided to further finish it at 1.7 millimeter and not overcorrect it too much as we were already getting a good tracking in this case. Now, what was interesting is this patient wanted to do weekly aligner change as against my recommended time word of 10 day change. And we did go with weekly aligner change with this patient because he was very compliant and it worked. So this was the amount of overcorrection that we built in, and we actually did get a lot of the overcorrection that we built in. Now, if you see this view on the left, that was a severe amount of overcorrection and intrusion built in, and this is what we got. So we did end up getting his lower incisors at a much lower level than the canines. In the next set, we decided to give some class two elastics in a triangular fashion to help with vertical component to help improve the bite further. And what we also, I would like to tell you, is we cannot extrude all the posterior teeth at the same time. It is not biomechanically possible with braces and not so with Invisalign. And this is how we planned the leveling of the curve of SP as well. This is how he looked at the end of the first set. We had achieved good bite opening. We only wanted some more torque and proclination of the upper incisors. And this is his current position where we've already achieved an improvement in the proclination and torquing of the upper incisor. Then we almost at the end of his treatment. His smile is much better. He's smiling much more and his teeth are much more visible now. These are his comparison, intraoral and extraoral. This is what we were at, then the expected and the actual. So even in a much older patient, what you see is what you get. This is the progress of his bite opening. In this patient, what went well, that this patient was very compliant with aligners and elastics and weekly aligner change worked well. The leveling of curve of speed, the can correction and the upper incisor proclination also worked very well. What would I do differently? With G8, I would probably not build such an exaggerated curve C. I would still build in some overtreatment, but not so much. I would also start with precision bite ramps and then shift to canine bite ramps once my overjet increased. And also, I would not go overboard with conventional attachments. 
My last case for today is a female patient in her 30s who was worried about severe erosion of her teeth. She had a class 2 division 2 malocclusion with an overbite of almost 5 mm, severe crowding and deep bite, retrocline upper incisors, but her main concern was erosion on the lingual surface of her upper incisors and attrition on the posterior teeth. She was also a brachycephalic face type and a horizontal grower. As you can see, a full class 2 on the left side and an end on class 2 on the right side with a deep bite. My treatment plan for her was alignment, sequential maxillary distalization of the upper 7, 6 and 5 and then 4, as well as the anteriors after extraction of the upper third molars, correction of deep bite by intrusion of primarily the upper incisors, use of class 2 elastics to support the distalization and expansion. Now, my treatment goal in this patient was to achieve an ideal overjet and overbite with a class 1 occlusion or probably an end on on the left side because to begin with, she was a full cusp class 2 on the left side and it is very difficult to achieve a full class 1 on that side without any additional auxiliary mechanics. When we look at her clinchic plan, we can see a typical distalization plan with some power ridges in the anterior to help with torque there's distalization happening, there's precision hooks for the class 2, and also some amount of conventional and optimized attachments present. Now, when we look at the amount of uh, intrusion that has been built in, there is some amount of relative as well as true intrusion built in the lowers, but primarily more intrusion was built into the upper incisors. Also, when we look at the occlusal view, we can see that there was hardly any overbite left at the end of treatment plan, and there was only mild amount of heavy contacts in the posterior. So the amount of overcorrection built in this patient was not as much as the much older patient. Also, like the previous patient, that we did do stage intrusion of the upper incisors with proclining, intrusion, and then retraction. So when we look at the end of the first set, or almost at the end when we did the, the uh, photographs, we saw that the bite had opened tremendously. And this was at the end of the additional set of aligners, where we achieved a full class one correction on the right side, and we've reached a end-on relation on the left side. Now, there was also a Bolton discrepancy in this patient, and she was avoiding IPR because of the severe loss of enamel that was already present. The bite had completely opened and the smile was looking much better. This was the progress of distalization in this patient. And this was before expected and actual. Because we had not corrected the Boltons, we would not had not corrected the midlines as well. So what we saw in the plan is what we got. Now, this is where we started at 4.7 millimeter. And we actually achieved a good amount of overbite correction. And then in the second plan, we already achieved 1.3 millimeter of an overbite and decided to finish with 1.5 millimeter and convinced her to do some amount of IPR at the end. Now, what went well in this patient was patient was compliant and sequential distalization worked really well on the right side. The bite opening and top correction was also very predictable. In the next similar case, what I would do differently is probably do some IPR to correct the midlines and also improve my molar and canine relation on the left side. Also with G8, there would not be any need for an overtreatment to be built in for overbite correction. Now, at the end of my presentation today, I would like to share my mantras for deep bite correction. First of all, we have to customize a treatment goal for each of our patients, which is achievable and beneficial to the patient and not necessarily an ideal treatment plan. We need to substitute attachments on the lower premolars if needed when factoring in premolar extrusion. We should also stage upper incisor movements when you have severely retroclined upper incisors. And with the new G8, I would reduce the amount of overtreatment, if at all, in leveling the curve of speed and keep the overtreatment proportional to the age of the patient and ask for automatic placement of precision bite trams. Winston Cox said, in adult orthodontic treatment, successful treatment is one that reaches the treatment goal. And that is my main mantra. Thank you all for a very patient hearing. Namaste.